All right, take one, two, that's actually take two. Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel where I talk about my game and uh, match reviews and things I do to try to get better. Uh, today we have a different kind of video though. I had recently a person on my channel ask about my footwork and if I could shed in some information about what I do to have such good footwork. Um, it's a nice compliment. Um, and I thought I'd put together a nice video uh, describing some of the concepts and ideas that I've implemented into my game to improve my footwork. And these are things that I feel that are not so common, uh, commonly discussed. Um, and I think that they really make a big difference in one's game if you can practice them and put them in your game. Um, so yeah, uh, I've... Over the years, I've ha had uh, a lot of coaches, and I've kept track of them in my books. I've, I have a lot of notes here, and they're just filled with a lot of information that I think um, that I think was worthwhile to note down. So yeah, I have a lot, um, and I feel like I want to do a little video series on things that are not commonly discussed, um, but they can really help your game because I think you guys are out there. Uh, wanting to improve your game. So, without further ado, um, oh yeah, I just wanted to say before I started that I'm not in any way thinking that I know everything and that I'm, you know, I've made it in the table tennis world because I certainly haven't. But the things that I will discuss, um, they're, I've bounced them with good coaches and I've been told them by good coaches. Um, so, yeah. Uh, I don't want to come across as someone who thinks they know everything, but yeah. All right, without further ado, let's get this started. Uh, I have a little video here, and we can just jump right in. All right, so the first topic is the proper footing for a wide forehand. I have a picture here of Fan Jin Dung, and that's when Ma Long just pushed him out wide. And if you notice, his right foot is behind his left. And that's important because it lets him push off with the right and get back into balance after he was off balance. I think there'll be a couple of videos here of him pushing back and you can see how he keeps it behind his left. And that lets him get right back into the point and play. Here's a video of me doing it the wrong way. <clears throat> so you can see what happens to most people is they, they put the right foot in front of the left. But now we're doing it correctly and we're keeping that right foot behind the left and it's letting us stay in balance and then push back for another good forehand or say another backhand. And then I have a video of me doing multi-ball with a robot. And basically I just have the robot spitting the ball to one spot. And the important thing in this is to wait for the ball to be thrown before you go and then focus on keeping that right foot behind the left. And, and that's the drill. And you can do this with a multi-ball or a robot. It takes a while. If, you're, if you stick with it, um, it can really become a part of your game. And it'll really help uh, because it lets you jump right back into the point. Um, <clears throat> yeah. And here's the last little video of Fenja Dung doing it correctly. Yes. All right. The next topic, power stance after serve. So this is a picture of Molong directly after he served. I know it's a little bit confusing, but uh, this is right after he served. And what this stance lets him do is it lets him use both feet very quickly after the serve and, and to move left or right no matter where the opponent goes. Um, most people use, they don't plant both feet right after and then they lose a little bit of time. I think a video will come up here of him playing here soon. Um, oh, that's okay. It's a video of me, but yeah, that's the right way to do it is you, you serve and then you push off with both feet and you land on both feet and that lets you have a good, uh, it, it's very quick and efficient and it lets you move either direction very in a, in a powerful way. This is the wrong way to do it. Um, that I'm showing you, it's like using one foot and kind of lagging and that, that'll just kill your time and you won't be as effective. So here's a video of Malong doing it correctly one more time for you. Yes. All right, next topic, moving around the corner with space. 
So as you can see here, I've made a little diagram of the table. And so this is when the ball's coming to your backhand and you're trying to turn around and use a forehand. Now, most people move and they try to cut the corner tight. And what happens is if you see this arrow of the, ball, of the ball's uh, direction, it, as it keeps going, it gets wider and wider. And that's a problem when you're trying to turn around with the forehand and you're not giving yourself space because it'll just cut you short. So here's a video of me doing some multi-ball. And as you can see, I'm trying to keep my space away from the table as I'm turning the corner. And I'm not trying to cut the corner and uh, lose space. So I'm, I'm keeping that space away from the table and I'm trying to work around, around the table, if that makes any sense. And it lets you work around and then it lets you have time and it lets you work into the ball as opposed to being you know, jammed up, stuck, and kind of doing this push thing that I'm sure we all have done. And here's a couple shots of Malong doing it properly. Uh, you can see he serves, gives himself space on this one too, and he just hits that nice little forehand. So give him space and put it there. All right, after moving back, after moving in, after moving in, pushing back, sorry. So here's a picture of Xu Xin, and it can be a little confusing, but once the video goes, you'll see it. He's served, or Molong has served, and Xu Xin has moved in, and then now he's pushing back with both feet. And I think it was Peter Carlson who told me about this. He said, most people just push out with the right foot for right-handed players, and that's not so effective. He said, you should use both feet to push out, and it'll, you'll be a lot more aggressive on the next ball because you'll, you'll be able to push out properly. And as you can see in these videos here, he uses both feet to push out, not just one, which is a very common mistake that people make. So this is what it looks like to do it wrong. So pushing in with one, and then you only push out with one. And that, that's what it was like to do it correctly. So you go in with one foot, then you push out with both. And that's gonna let you um, be a lot stronger um, and quicker uh, for the next ball. And like, like the other things, it just takes practice, 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 practice. And then once these habits are made, then they kind of uh, happen without you thinking about them in your game. And you just kind of do them because you have the reps in. All right, the backwards forehand cross step. This is probably one of my favorite shots um, because I just randomly came across it. <clears throat> and I, I think I was watching Fan Jandong and I saw him do a movement that I was like, wait a second, that, that doesn't look natural. And he was doing a backwards movement while hitting a full forehand. And you'll see in a second here how unorthodox it looks. Um, but yeah, basically it requires you to step backwards and do a cross step while swinging your racket back and it's it's very awkward and it took a lot of practice to get but i've used it in games and matches and it's quite the it's pretty cool it's it, it's a it's a time saver so you get to hit a big forehand without without being late <clears throat> okay so this is me doing a normal forehand so you have time to move around the ball. And then this is me doing the forehand, backhand, backwards cross step. Okay, and here is a video of me doing it with the robot. And basically you just set the robot on one spot and you have to not jump the gun and you have to wait for the robot to spit the ball. And then as soon as the robot spits the ball, you go ahead and do that cross backwards step while swinging your racket back and then following through forward with your Top spin. So yeah, this one is pretty tough. Do it in the mirror first. Try to get it in the mirror um, and before you do it with a ball. And um, because it, it's quite awkward, but it's really cool when once you get it. And it's it definitely a time saver. And your opponents won't really know how you got a forehand in when they thought they had you jammed. And uh, that's it for today. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. 
it's just a couple of my ideas that I had because the one person said uh, that they wanted to see, um, they, wa- they had a question about my moving and how it was so good. And these are just some ideas. Um, but yeah, if you guys want to see more of these, I have a lot of information um, that I would love to just put out there. Um, if you guys found this worthwhile, uh, maybe you guys thought some of these were already well known, or maybe I shed some light onto something that you didn't know. But yeah, uh, leave in the comments if uh, if you want to learn about anything else in particular. Um, and yeah, I was thinking about doing a cool little series about things that are not commonly discussed and uh, just help everyone with the table t- tennis uh, knowledge, yeah. All right, guys, that's it for today. Hopefully I can do another one soon. That would be a lot of fun. And um, yeah, see you in the next one.